when I'm out in the field and I'm in an arena of subjects, I think I, I always gravitate towards someone who has a face that is really lived in. And honestly, they could be six years old and have a lived in face. They, they have to have a, a spirit that I connect with. And, and, and really that is my invitation and my introduction to them. It's sort of a meeting of the fine things, you know, the, the reasons we're alive. And if, if that's about uh, sorrow or if that's about pain or if that's about exuberance, it doesn't really matter, but it, it, it feels um, to me that there has to be an element of truthfulness and, and vitality. And that's what I'm drawn to, and that's what I hope when, when I arrive to a person that, that they also feel from me, and that within that sharing we can uh, make a very fine photograph. I've been traveling for 19 years, and I left home when I was 18 initially for almost a five-year period. Since then, I've been to 50 different countries and six continents around our world. I think that I gravitate mostly to Asia. I branch off from Asia, certainly. I mean, I enjoy Africa a great deal and, and South America as well. But Asia, for me, there's a, a real connection. I get off a plane and I feel like I've arrived home. I like the, the, the philosophies and religions there. I like the colors. I like the, the richness. And the, the temperament is exquisite and, and, and soft and lovely. Um, however, I find myself constantly returning to India. India is a, a place that I think I've been to about seven times and perhaps spent three years there. Everything is right at the doorstep. Nothing is hidden. So you have, you have magic and you have very harsh realities and it's all together in, in, in one very um, poignant sighting, I suppose. The relationship that I have with photographing people in, in different countries, it, it, it changes depending on the country for sure. I think that I have to, to really have um, patience that I am utterly willing to have in order to create a mount of safety for someone to feel at ease with me and, and the new equipment that, that surrounds them so that it isn't something entirely, well, it may be always foreign, but it isn't so frightening. Papua New Guinea takes up a third of the world's languages. It's, it's really pretty astounding if you think about it. On the island, there are a huge amount of different tribes. One that I had the, the pleasure of photographing are called the Chimbu Warriors. And they would walk, march really, in, in groups of hundreds with spear in hand. And their footfall would always be matching. Each step was taken with, with such a gravity that the, the earth would actually shake. It was like a group of horses running by. I mean, they were incredible and all made up. And you really got the sense that they lived um, in direct correspondence with, with their immediate environment. I mean, they look like these great, grand, ferocious birds. And, and they're, they're just very um, impressive and, and really intimidating. The image of the young boys diving off the rocks in Zanzibar is, is called Twilight. And I love this image because it really represents to me what, what life is for young people on the island of Zanzibar. Actually, when I took the image, I had been done with my day. I was quite tired of photographing and, and laid all my gear down on the beach and went out to swim. And while I was out swimming, I saw these fellows um, swim out to a rock and they started doing all these flips and these dives and I thought well I ought to go back and, and get my gear and come out here again so that's what I did I, I went out and um, treaded water with 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 my gear and these fellows just kept 
doing all these dives um, along with belly flops and flips and everything else off the rocks. It's very evocative of freedom and where we'd all like to be.